Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Reclaiming My Life podcast. We are so excited, as always, to be here with you this evening. But before we get started, please meet my beautiful co-authors, Mrs. Tremika Cooper. Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Reclaiming My Life. Dr. Tiffany Tyson. Hello, and welcome to Reclaiming My Life podcast. And tonight, I'm extremely excited because our special guest is one of my very best friends for over 30 plus years. Please meet the beautiful Mrs. Sylvia Perron. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, Sylvia. thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome, so very welcome. Look, did I mess up that last name? No, you did it perfect. <laughs> oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, because you know, I'm still on McCoy. <laughs> yes, I'm still on I'm still Hey, on it'll the forever name. be. Yes, I'm still yes, on that name. I will forever name. be a McCoy, so. <laughs> I got It's you. okay. Yes, Sylvia, I am so glad, you know, that you were willing, available, and able to join us here on Reclaiming My Life podcast tonight. And tonight, we're going to be talking about COVID-19. You know, unfortunately, we've lost a lot of loved ones, a lot of friends, you know, people have lost their families to COVID-19. And you actually Mm -hmm. suffered from COVID-19. Um, I believe earlier in the year, but you are here tonight. You are a witness of the traumatic experience that a lot of people, you know, have gone through. And we appreciate Mm -hmm. you being here to share your story. If you would, please talk to us and tell us about your experience. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. For me, um, COVID was very traumatic. And I am just now, a year later, totally recovering from long COVID. And what I mean by that is that during that time, I was in the hospital for about eight days. I came home, I was on oxygen for two months. Um, And all this time, I was still, you know, out of work. We had a lot of things happen during this time. Um, In addition to me worrying about my health and suffering with my health, I also um, had to the long-term effects of long COVID, which means that I had a hard time with memory. As you know, I'm a therapist. So a lot of what we do is all modalities and things like that. And in that, it took me a long time to recover all of those things that I lost while I was in school, all of you know my approaches and therapy, I had to write literally down everything that um, my client said, everything that I said, because I won't remember it from week to week. And that was one of the things that I struggled with the most um, far as long term. But I also had a lot of issues with my breathing. Um, I still, at times, (laughs) you'll hear me do like that. And it's been almost a year. So there's still some struggles with the breathing along with the long-term memory. It's just been very traumatic and very impactful on my life and watching my family watch me go through this. Wow, you know, that's a lot. It it truly is. You know, to hear um, the trial and trauma, you know, associated with COVID, you know, of course it affects everyone Mm -hmm. different. But, you know, I know that you truly, truly suffered um, with COVID. And tonight, my co-authors, they want to ask you some questions, you know, questions, of course, that our audience, you know, may um, want and need the answers to. So first, I want to yes. bring on Mrs. Tremika Cooper. Okay. Hi, Miss Sylvia. Hey, how you doing, Tremika? Wonderful. So my question, you know, um, during COVID time, everybody was saying, you need to get the COVID shot. You need to get the COVID shot. Did you get the COVID shot? And if so, did you get it before or after you were in the hospital with COVID? So when I first got COVID, the vaccination was not 
um, really readily available. It was gotcha. coming out, and there were some people that had already started getting it, but I got sick before the vaccination came out, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. <clears throat> even though I experienced a lot of like illness, long-term effects, and stuff like that, I am still hesitant about the vaccine, and that's just me personally. Um, I don't judge anybody, and I ask that nobody judges me. It's just, right. though I did get sick, I have people now that are on my staff that are fully vaccinated and boosted that are still getting sick. So my question right. to myself was, if people are still getting sick, why would I add something else to my, my body? So it's just me and trying to really process it and see what's best for me and just to feel good mm -hmm. and to feel confident about making that decision. Right. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Tiffany Tyson. Hello, Miss Sylvia. Hey, Dr. Tyson, how are you? I'm wonderful. I hope you are. I am. So you just mentioned something earlier. You said you actually were um, obtained COVID prior to the vaccine coming out. So with you know, new things coming out, um, researchers still trying to understand it. What was your biggest fear when you were hospitalized initially with, with COVID? Um, do you mean like overall or medically? Like, is there a specific? Overall, specific medically, what were some of your, your, your fears or concerns? When I was in the hospital, to be honest, my biggest fear was that I was not going home. Um, <clears throat> I was really afraid that I would never see my kids again, never see my grandkids, never see my husband again, my mom, because I was on the unit where, like, they had different divisions in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And when I went to and they took me to my room, I was actually in, like, a closet by myself because they had nowhere to put me. Mm -hmm. And on my way to my room, they had, like, all these plastic, like, plastic doors and plastic everything was just plastic everybody was hazmat is down mm -hmm. it was really really scary and even when i went to my room i literally had to give myself therapy in the moment like the whole time with the positive self-talk and the encouragement because i really did not think i was going to come out of it i really honestly that was my biggest fear was the fact that the last time when my husband dropped me off at the ER, because of course you can't have visitors, right. they can't send books, they can't send flowers, they can't send anything. My biggest fear was that was going to be the last time that I saw him and that I would not get to say goodbye to my kids. That so, was my fear. So it sounds like your technique that you use on your clients, you were now using them for yourself to stay, to stay positive. Yes, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, um, but yes, I had to, um, and there were even times I tried, Dr. Tyson, to still use positive self-talk, to still, you know, have gratitude, all of that stuff where it just did not work, like, because they would come in, but I will say this, what, what was really encouraging for me is that I never had a fever, um, I never, the, the biggest thing they were worried about was my oxygen, but all the other stuff that came with COVID, like, um, really, really uh, the fever and some things, the heart problems and stuff like that. I was lucky because a lot of my blood levels and things stayed good while I was in the hospital. Wonderful. A lot of that stuff was good. And there were like the ladies next to me, like we had to share rooms <laughs> in the hospital. I'm like, I'm never going to get well because these people here are sick. <laughs> but, yeah. you know? yeah. So like even in the midst of all that, we still had to share a room. There was someone sick. She left and they brought someone else in. So it was constant movement. And it was just a lot to process. Thank you so much. Sylvia, and I failed to ask, um, give the people a little bit about your background, you know, let them know a little bit about you because, you know, our, our audience is hearing you say you're a therapist, 
let them know what kind of therapist you are. Just give them a little bit of history. You know, look, let me brag on my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yes, I am a marriage and family therapist. Um, I am an associate in the moment, currently working towards earning my hours. I actually am very, very close to my hours, but here in California, I have to have 104 weeks of supervision before I can even apply to test. So I just kind of took a pause and I just recently took a, a job, well, a career, a career move as a program director for a 24 hour inpatient residential treatment facility for ch- children, teens and adolescents. And that is a very rewarding position. Um, I do have a staff of 35 people that I'm now responsible for. Um, and I also supervise the clinic, the clinicians on that position as well. What else you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we'll be here all night, you know, but I do want them to know, you know, like, you know, they're hearing us say that we've had like a 30 year uh, friendship. We mm-hmm. actually met working at the postal service together. So that's mm-hmm. some past history um, of what we did and how we met and, you know, we've had babies together and all of that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But um, they're cousin twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, but of course, you know, we're talking about reclaiming, you know, the trials we go mm-hmm. through, the trauma we go through, but then how we overcome and reclaim. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you got home, what did it look like for you? How did you start reclaiming your life after COVID? Man, it was really hard because what I did, one part I forgot to tell you was that my husband got sick at the same time I was in the hospital. He got sick. And by the time I was discharged, he was really sick. So the both of us were here sick, (laughs) trying to take care of each other, but neither one of us was really able to do it. Um, But once I came back, I just, I really, really just got rest. I didn't worry about anything. Like Mm -hmm. my life flashed before my eyes while I was in the hospital and I knew that I really did not need to worry about anything. And I didn't didn't worry about it. So a part of me reclaiming my life was accepting the fact that I could not do what I used to do in the moment. Mm -hmm. And learning how to accept that is hard in and of itself just because you're used to we're used to doing whatever we need to do, right? We just we're moms, we're wives, we're sisters, we're you know, and we just do whatever we need to do. Absolutely. So that was the first part was accepting the fact that I needed to allow myself to rest. But during all this time while I was laying down, the Lord was literally downloading into me. And though I was afraid I was not gonna make it out of that, I had hope hope and in my heart I believe that God was not finished with me I believe that there was yet more work for me to do I believe that there was people that he had for me to reach and to teach and to help them to know that when you think you're at the break like when your life is almost over right before you God says no not yet I have yet more work for you to do and the more I begin to lay and just rest and just allow myself to recover the more my relationship grew with the Lord and the more I got strength from what I already knew. I drew from the word of God. I drew from praying. I drew from, of course, fasting, but it was just incredible. It was incredible at, you know, just watching myself heal through that. And even today, I actually just shared today with someone that, because someone says, man, you have an incredible memory. And I just did like this. And they were like, what do you say? Why are you, you know, why are you doing that? I said, because just this time last year, I couldn't remember anything. I couldn't remember a modality. I couldn't remember a process. I barely could remember week to week, but I told my clients when I went back in November, like I didn't drive a car for three months. So I did have to, I did have to really, really, really reclaim my life. Just regular day-to-day functions. I had to practice on getting up, walking from my bedroom to the kitchen practice making myself a bowl of noodles, practice making my, Mm. like it literally was step by step, day by day process to reclaim my life. And here I am one year later, I am excelling in my career. I am, 
I mean, I just drove across the country. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. From California to North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. But look at here. You know, that what you just so, gave us, that's what I was waiting on. Because you're, you're a pastor, right? You minister to people. I mean, you're so grounded in the Lord. I was waiting on that. You know, yes. I knew you had to pull from it, girl. I said, wait a minute. Yes. She's giving me everything besides that. So that right there, that's what I was waiting on. You know, okay. that's what's going to encourage people. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They got I to do. have that faith. But, you mm -hmm. know, unfortunately, when people don't have a relationship with God, they don't know how to pray. They don't know, you know, how to go to the word. They don't know how to believe. You know, they don't know how to feel that there's going to be hope, you know, and trust God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. that was one thing that I was so grateful for. I said, my sister, she's going to be flat on her face, you know. So I thank God for that, for what you just gave us just now. Yes. Yes. And what I really, really believe is that there nothing happens by chance. Everything that happens is a way that God creates us to get to that next place in him, to get one step closer to him. And I know that there are some people that have gone through COVID, that have gone through life's difficulties, that have gone through situations that they don't know what hope is. But that is just an opportunity to get them to say, what must I do? All the father, what must I do? What yeah. must I do? And that's the first segue into prayer. That's the first segue into having a relationship with the Lord. That's the first segue is to be willing. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. I want to ask Tramika and Dr. Tyson if they have any further questions or comments for you before we close out tonight. Tramika? Well, Miss Sylvia answered all the questions that I had. I had one about any other um, side effect that she may have, um, but she said she didn't. So that was my only other question. Okay. Thank you so much, Tramika. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tyson? Yes, and she actually just answered my next question. I was going to ask her what encouragement does she have for people that, that may be at home listening or, or viewing us right now, and what would she give them? But she just gave it. She poured it out, and, and yeah. my sister, they that was awesome. They, I mean, everybody needed to hear that. That was awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sylvia, thank you. Thank you so much for being on here tonight. Because our platform, you know, we're here to give people hope, to inspire other people that's going through some of the same things that we've gone through. And we definitely know that a lot of people, unfortunately, are going through COVID. Um, you know, somebody needed to hear this tonight. So we thank you so much for joining us here on Reclaiming My Life. And we are so grateful to God that you were able to reclaim yours. Amen.